Hello and welcome to the Saskatchewan Wildlife Federation's new Youth Conservation Leadership Speaker Series. My name is Chelsea Walters and today I'm here with conservation professional Jillian Moldenhauer to discuss her role as a conservation officer here in Saskatchewan. So thank you Jillian for being with me today. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Happy to be here. Okay, so I've got to say we so it's in the youth conservation leadership series we kind of have been taking these kids in and um, running through different scenarios of different conservation jobs they can have and we generally we try and connect them to different professionals and people that can help them kind of get experience but one of the major things like I would say well over half into 80 percent of the kids that we see say I want to be a conservation officer so I know a lot of people are going to be really excited to hear a little bit about you and a little bit about the work you do. So why don't you kind of give us a brief kind of rundown uh, what that looks like? Okay. Um, so right now I work at Rowan's Ravine Provincial Park. That's where my office is. And we do a bunch of different things kind of depending on the season and from day to day. Um, the fall is typically our busiest season. That's when we have um, the majority of the hunting seasons going on. So for that, we're out in the field all the time, talking to people, checking hunters, making sure people are following the laws. Um, we've also got fishing going on. Um, that goes on pretty much all year round, whether it's ice fishing on the lake here or in the summer. So that keeps us really busy. We also do environmental files. So somebody is polluting, they're littering, they're, um, you know, making a beach where they're not supposed to make a beach, um, destroying habitat, we get called in for that as well. Um, so that is also a big part of our job is investigating those things and, um, you know, dealing with all sorts of infractions, but also dealing with um, just people who enjoy the resources and for the most part are using them responsibly. Yeah, so, I mean, actually we just talked to a, a person who does the permitting for different aquatic habitat stuff and he had mentioned oh, yeah. that he worked with conservation officers and stuff like that, so I thought that was cool. Um, so what does like a, a typical day look like for you? I mean, let's let's say in your busiest time and then also what, what kind of a downtime day would look for you as well? Uh, so in, in our busiest time, um, with hunting season, we're usually up and running before sunrise um, because hunting time legally starts half an hour before sunrise. So we got to be out there uh, making sure that people aren't hunting too early. Um, and then depending kind of what's going on and um, how busy it is, sometimes we'll work all the way through right until sundown and half an hour or more after that to make sure that people aren't hunting too late. Um, and anything can happen during that time. Uh, you can be all over the district with tip calls. You can find an investigation. You can stumble across it. Maybe it's a shot and left, or maybe somebody um, shot a deer. It's the wrong species, or they didn't tag it. It can really go any direction. Um, anything can happen. You can get a tip call from one end of your district when you're on the opposite end, and now suddenly you've, you've got to be there. Um, it's, it's really no two days are ever the same. It really keeps you on your toes. Um, you never really know what to expect. You kind of have to expect everything, um, which keeps it interesting. Um, and then in the downtime, we've got a little bit more flexibility. I wouldn't say we ever have like quiet times because we've always got something going on. Um, but that's when it's not quite as busy. That's when we make sure that we've got all of our files handled. Um, if we've got maybe a trial or a court coming up, that's when we do our preparation for that. We spend a little bit of time in the office, but we're always still responding to tip calls if they come in. So you might plan to have an office day where you're gonna enter in all your files into the system and then an hour into it, you get a tip call and you've gotta go and that takes up the rest of your day and maybe even longer. Um, so like I said, you never really know what's gonna happen. It can go any, <laughs> any way on any given day. Yeah, so it, like it sounds like there's actually a little bit of paperwork involved as well. Yeah, yeah, it's not all fun and games just out in the field um, checking people. And, and if you write a ticket, there there are things that you have to, to do with that. We've got a system that we've got to enter it in. Um, you've got to write up things to send to the court so that if the person does decide that they would like to exercise their right to, to plead not guilty and take it to trial so that they have all that. Um, if it goes to trial, we have to make what's called a court brief, where we have to compile all of our evidence, all the statements we might have taken, 
Um, we have to provide disclosure to the individual so that they can see what evidence we have and they can prepare their defense for it. Um, it can actually turn out to be a lot of paperwork depending on the size of the file. Yeah, so I mean, considering that, I mean, there's kind of a wide array of skills you'd need. Uh, what kind of, you know, uh, skills should people be working on or even schooling and courses could people take if they wanted to, you know, go into a field like yours? Um, I'd say one of the most important skills that you could have is probably communication because uh, the job involves so much talking to people and interacting with people and 99% of them are strangers. Um, if you can't talk to strangers, if you can't engage in conversation and maybe go down the road where you have to tell someone that they're breaking the law and they are going to be getting a ticket, if you don't have the communication skills to be able to phrase that um, and communicate that effectively, it's going to make your job a lot harder. Um, so I would definitely suggest that people if they're having if they're very shy and they don't like communicating with people maybe try branching out um, work on that because it's a really big part of the job um, also report writing um, work on your 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 writing skills those will come in handy uh, for court files um, writing your writing skills typically translate also into being able to articulate your um, verbal skills so if you can write it down a lot of times you can communicate it to people um, so those would be probably two of the biggest skills that I would recommend people prepare for. Um, and then as for courses, um, really the best thing you can do is go to school um, that is tailored to conservation enforcement. Yeah, so where did you go to school? Uh, I attended school at the Prince Albert Saskatchewan Polytechnic campus. Uh, that is where they have the course. It's called Resource and Environmental Law. It's a two-year diploma program. And that is the only place in Saskatchewan currently that offers a course. There is also uh, the college down in Lethbridge. That is either a three or four year course, depending on how you want to do it. Um, but those are the two places closest to us that you can take the schooling for this career. Cool. And were there any like specific courses that you took that maybe or even uh, jobs you ran into in the last you know couple years of doing this work that you have kind of thought, oh, that have been a neat career avenue for me. I know like a lot of young people are really interested in being a conservation officer. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering like as a conservation officer, what have you been exposed to in the last few years that you thought looked kind of like an interesting job? Um, actually being an instructor for the course that I went through at Saskatchewan Polytechnic, um, I really enjoyed the schooling. And um, I think it, like if I wasn't a conservation officer, that's probably the closest I could get to being a conservation officer. Um, it was just the courses were really interesting. Um, I really liked the instructors and the style of instructing that they did. Um, it was amazing. And so I'd probably be an instructor with them if I wasn't a conservation officer. Did you have a favorite course? Uh, I did. It was our defensive tactics course, which basically uh, is like hand to hand fighting. Um, mm -hmm. And I actually developed quite the passion for it um, that now I am an instructor, a trainer for our officers, and I help teach the new officers that come for us seasonally. I trained some of our new full times at the academy that they attended. And then I also help with the annual recertification of our full time officers across the province. That is wild. <laughs> it's it's a lot of fun. Curious stuff. Um, all right, well, uh, just to wrap it up, I guess, uh, is there a piece of advice that either you received or that you've kind of developed as you've uh, gone along in this career that you'd give to young people who are thinking about starting off in uh, as a conservation officer? Yeah, I'd say that um, don't feel bad if you don't think you don't know everything because you'll never know everything. If you stop learning with this job, you're doing it wrong. You're always going to be learning something new. They're always going to be adapting legislation. New things are going to be coming out. Your duties are going to change. It's always going to be dynamic. So don't feel bad if you don't know something. You can learn it and you will learn it and then you'll be great. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for coming on. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to chat again sometime in the future. If there's anything else that you think we missed, is there something you'd like to say to wrap it up? Uh, no, I think I think that's kind of a, a pretty good overview of what the job is. Um, if anybody wants to reach out to me, um, that is 
perfectly fine. I'd be happy to answer any questions that people come up with after watching this video. Um, if you're interested in finding out what we do, contact your local office and see if you can schedule a ride along. That's something that we do. Um, so if it's something you're passionate and interested in, give us a shout. All right. Thank you, Jillian.